Hello and welcome to Handheld Gaming, your source of reviews, hints and tips for all things gaming. Today's video we'll be visiting Cyberpunk 2077 and this video is for those of you with the 1x Player 4800U, which is the model I'll be using in these videos. In this clip I'll be sharing three different tests I've carried out. Firstly, what's the best FPS we can get without using FSR or any scaling and using the lowest settings in game and maximum power envelope. Second, is it even possible to get a reliable 60 plus FPS out of the One X player? And finally, what are the best settings overall for a smooth FPS and minimal power load? I'll show in-game footage of each game and I'll run the in-game benchmarks in all three tests. If you find this content helpful, please like and subscribe. My aim, as I've said before, is to work through my own game library and share with the community any tips or tweaks I make whilst playing these games. Test 1 is what is the maximum FPS we can get without using scaling or any FSR and what is the power draw on the APU. And the answer to that is, you'll see around 35 FPS at close to 30 watts power draw. This using my maximum performance power plan, which I mentioned in a previous video, and I'll include a link at the top of the screen. Test 2 is can we get 60 plus FPS out of the One X Player 4800U? And the answer, surprisingly, is yes. But it looks horrible. Using the built-in scaling won't see higher than 45 FPS, but using FSR and ultra quality will see higher than 60 FPS. However, visually, it looks like looking through a Vaseline lens. Power draw is also lower than test 1 at 20 watts. It would be great if you could force the APU to run closer to its maximum clock speeds for the GPU and the CPU. Now, there are tools available that allow this, but in my testing, it doesn't really make any difference in Cyberpunk 2077. I even tried using power control panel tools to allow you to park cores and reduce the CPU to 4 cores to free up the power envelope for the GPU. But that in fact reduced the, the FPS as the chip appears more happy to save power than push itself. I'll share the link below uh, to this tool in the description. And credit to the creator of this app, it seems really really powerful. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. It encourages me to carry on making this content. Now, 
Test 3 is the real usage test in my view. What is the maximum usable FPS versus most efficient power use? So it's possible to get a stable 30 FPS in non-turbo mode using the ultra quality setting in FSR and low settings across the board in the graphics settings and also switching VSync locked to 30 FPS. At 30 FPS in non-turbo mode the power draw is around 15 watts which is a good 6 watts more than the Steam Deck reviewers seem to be posting. But worth remembering, the 1X player battery is 47% larger than the Steam Deck's battery, so battery life will be roughly the same at maybe 2-3 to three hours. One benefit of running in, in non-turbo mode is that if you enter an area in the game where more FPS would be the difference between replaying a mission or succeeding first try, it's easy enough to press the turbo button and the APU will increase its power draw to nearly 30 watts and the FPS will increase by approximately 15 FPS if you've not locked in VSync. Fortunately, the streets of night. Trauma team will be in trouble. Sign up for our platinum plan today, because your life is worth it. 9999 Trauma team. Don't forget, you're worth it. So, did you get that loan in the end? No, then my rate was. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Again, as I say in every video, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. It encourages me to carry on making this content. Thank you.